All right, hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Um, today we're going to keep talking about hypothesis testing for two populations uh, uh, with means right now, because what we're going to talk about next is uh, match samples, which is a particularly uh, useful case uh, when we have two populations. The tricky part about this is that, um, well, the nice part, I should say, is that this allows us to isolate what we really care about a lot of times. So before, when we, what we've been dealing with so far is that our samples have been actually um, what we would call independent or simple, yeah, independent, simple random samples. And that's what we've meant by sample. Um, problem is that when we look at the difference between two independent simple random samples, like we've been doing for two population means, um, and like we will do with two population proportions, <coughs> What we have is we have two samples, right, or two populations, right, population one and population two. And we, what we care about is the difference between these two, right. And the problem with using two independent random samples is that when we choose them randomly, well, one of the nice things is that uh, we can use our sampling distribution information, our sampling theory, right. Um, but when we have a difference, it can come from two places. One is the difference, uh, the effects of a treatment, right? Say we have two groups. Um, so the effects of whatever the condition is. Um, so, for example, we looked at a case where we had nurses in Tampa and nurses in Dallas, maybe. It doesn't matter. Nurses in two different places. And so what we don't know is the difference that we see, we use our samples, does it come from the effects of the condition? Right, so different location or a treatment if we have uh, like placebo effect versus um, versus some kind of medical intervention um, or we have new processing method, you know, new sorting method um, that we're going to use in a, in a firm. Is that the source of the difference or is the source something else? In particular, uh, just random variation in our samples, right? So we, we're taking two samples. Say we get some of the highest paid nurses from one place and some of the lowest paid nurses from the other just by random chance. Well, that random variation is going to screw up our inference. We try to control and isolate that, right? Um, by using, or what we really do is we, we incorporate that into our uh, p-value. But if we can just eliminate it altogether, then that would be better. Hold on, I have to sneeze real quick. That ah, went away. Maybe it'll come back. Anyway, well, what we're going to do now is instead of using two different populations, we're kind of going to use two populations, but what we're going to do is take one population, right? And now we're going to look at it under two treatments. And in particular, what we're going to do is we're going to use the same sample for treatment A and treatment B. And what this does is this allows us to get rid of the random variation because we know it's the same group of people. So that what we're looking at instead is just the effect of the condition, <clears throat> whatever that happens to be. We know the populations are the same. Um, so what that means is that uh, ultimately what we have is we're going to create a difference. Right? We're going to have some x under treatment A for person I. And we're going to have x under treatment B for person I, and we can just look at the difference between these two, right? So we could do like a pretest and a post test, or we could, you know, we can do different orders and stuff. You know, we can have them watch, do something, then watch an instructional video, and then do it again, and we can look at before and after. Um, but what that means is that from this, we can get a difference for person I, and be, that's only because we can individually observe each person under both conditions, right? Under both treatments, and that that match samples makes this very useful. So let's lay out how we're gonna do this. Let's say for person I, uh, if x i t is val the value of x, we're gonna call x i t the value of x under treatment under condition or treatment t so that person 1 would have x11 one one and x12 one and person 2 is i equals 1 i equals 2 person 2 is going to have x21 and x22 two two. person 3 is going to have x31 and x32 and each of these is going to lead to a difference right 
or d1 is equal to x12 minus x11, and d2 is equal to x22 uh, minus x21, and so on and so forth. So that for each person, we're going to define a difference di. Right? Di now is di equals xi2 minus xi1, and that's the difference for person i. And what this means is, well, what, we, what we're now going to care about, unlike caring about the difference between two population means, what we're going to care about now is the population mean difference. It's a subtle distinction, um, but it makes some sense, right? So now we've defined an individual difference. Before, we didn't define individual differences. What we care about now is the population mean difference. Right? That's the average effect of the treatment, or the average difference from person I for 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 people who uh, from one to two, right? So this population mean difference would be the average effect of a treatment. Um, okay, this population mean difference we're going to call it D. It's going to be equal to the sum from I equals one to big N of D sub I all over big N. And it's just the population mean, right? We're using big ends because we're talking, we're iterating over the whole population. But we can't observe that. That's what we're trying to make predictions about. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use the sample mean difference. The sample mean difference. It's just like a sample mean, right? That, that's what we're dealing with here. We're actually looking at a characteristic, just like height, just like weight, just like IQ, just like filling uh, weight, whatever where d is now just a characteristic and so we have d bar is equal to, equal to the sum from i equals 1 to little n of d i over little n where we choose a random sample and that's our sample mean difference okay now uh, because this is just a, a sample mean what this means is that we could draw the sampling distribution of d bar it's going to be just like the sampling distribution of x bar because it's just a sample mean so d bar for any sample of size n is going to be centered at the true mean, right? The sampling distribution is going to be centered at the true mean difference. And the standard deviation of d bar sampling distribution is going to be equal to the standard deviation of d in the population divided by the square root of n, just like before. Now, uh, okay, so that's what we have for our sampling distribution. Our hypotheses are going to be just very similar to what we've looked at before. We have a left-tailed, a two-tailed, and a right-tailed, and we have a null and an alternative, and they look like this. Um, there's, there are going to be hypotheses about the mean difference of the population, right? So our null here is that d is greater than or equal to d0, and our alternative is that d is less than d0. For our two-tailed, it's going to be that d is equal to some value, d0. And then our alternative is going to be, of course, that it's uh, not equal. Where did that go? There we go. D is not equal to D0. And then last but not least, our right-tailed, we have that our sample, or that our population mean difference is less than or equal to D0. And then we're trying to test that against the alternative, that it's actually big, right? that there's a big difference. And a big positive difference. Okay. So under the null, uh, this is going to be centered at D0, right? So this is what the, the, what the purple graph I drew here is what the sampling distribution would be like if we knew the population mean difference. We don't, so we're doing hypothesis testing, so we're going to assume it's D0, right, for now. We also don't know <clears throat> um, the standard deviation, right? Because the way we usually do this is we actually, you might do this with like a focus group, right? Or you take them in, you find out what they like about a product beforehand, you let them play around, and then you take their evaluation of a product afterward, and you see if having an opportunity to play with the product changes. Um, what that means is usually only see like 10 or 20 of these people. So we're going to have to approximate this, right? That's almost equal to S over the square root of N. What this means is that instead of relating it to the standard normal distribution, uh, we're going to have to use a T distribution with N minus 1 degrees of freedom, just like we've done in the past. So... Matching is nice. It makes things a lot simpler. Um, it's it's just like the one sample. Uh, it just becomes like the one sample uh, mean sigma unknown case. We have d bar minus d0 over s of d divided by the square root of n, where s of d is our sample 
uh, standard deviation of differences. Now in practice, usually here you have to actually figure these out for these problems, right? It's not like before where uh, where it just gave you a, a what you call it, an S. You actually have to solve these. Um, but the nice thing is that uh, you can use very little data and get very good results. Sorry, that's the T dish. Or that's a, where am I? There I am. Uh, you can use very little data and get very nice results. This is going to be distributed with uh, n minus one degrees of freedom, <coughs> and then uh, that's it. That's pretty much it. That's what you need to know. Our hypotheses look like this stuff. Um, this is our test statistics. So this is for step one. Step two is going to be the same. Step three is going to use this test statistic, which means you need to calculate d bar, find d zero, calculate sd, find n um, from the question, and then work through step four and step five, just like you did before. So let's do a practice problem. Okay, a market research firm uh, used a sample. Okay, 